Hello friends, welcome back to the Codices tutorial series. Today topic which I am going to cover is something which is going to change the way of utilization of the physical PLCs. Yes, I am going to talk here about the new era of the virtual PLCs, which is a revolution started by the Codices, but Siemens has also started working on this revolution and they are coming also with the virtual PLC. How we can put this virtual PLC into cloud, VM or any server. In this particular tutorial, I am going to present you about the Codesys virtual PLC, how we can use and configure it. It is still in testing phase, but let's see how we can start it. So in order to start, we first need a Linux environment. So I have utilized Debian VM where I am going to install the SSH and also uh, the Docker. So it requires a Docker uh, image. So here in the Debian, I have opened the port for the SSH and I have the Docker installed, which will be utilized for the imaging from the codices. Now we will go to the codices ID. There we have installed the codices uh, package. And then when we scan, uh, we will get the IP of the particular VM. And then we will need to connect to the particular VM with the credentials. Okay. So once it is connected, then we need to utilize the deployment. So here we can see we have the two option. One is the virtual Linux and another is the edge gateway. So first we will install the virtual Linux. So that one image is installed and then we will install the edge gateway. Edge gateway is for the gateway through which we will be connecting to the PLC. Okay. So when we select and click on the install, the edge gateway will get installed. So once the age gateway get installed, okay, so these are the two image which is installed. Now we will go to the configuration part. So in the configuration, what we need to do is we need to configure the instance and the gateway. So the different instance of the PLC, which we want to configure and the gateway through which we will be connecting to those instances. So it, it is the same process as we do it in the normal way. So let's uh, first configure the gateway. So gateway, we need to select the gateway and then we need to select the gateway image, which we have ins already ins deployed. Okay. So select it and then when we click on the OK, then this particular gateway will get the installed. Okay. The instance will get created. So the gateway instance is created. Now sim in the similar manner, what we will do, we will also do the create the instance of the virtual PLC. So we will give a name, select the runtime. So it will be the virtual PLC runtime and then we will select the image of the virtual Linux and click on the OK. Then it will create the instance of that particular virtual PLC. So once these two are getting created, so it takes some time to get created. So yeah, this is created. Now what we need to do is we have another config option where we need to go and start it. So let's first see how we can configure. So these are the configuration parameter where which we will see at a later part how exactly we can utilize these particular configurations and what are these for. Okay. So here I'm just giving you that how what exactly this configure means. So here we need to configure a lot of parameters based on our need. Okay. So same thing in the gateway and same thing we have the configuration for the PLC instance. Okay, so after this instance has been created, we need to start this instances. Okay, so we need to click on the start. We can start selected, start all. Okay, so I'm doing here one by one. So start selected, the gateway has to get started first and then we will start the instance of the PLC. So once these two instances get started and it will come in the running mode. So status will change from the idle to running. Now what we need to do, we need to then configure and start using this in a similar manner how we used to do. So let's first we will create a gateway. So normally when we have done in the codices, we normally get by a default gateway, but as we have deployed it on a VM, so we need to create a gateway again using the instance which we have created. So we need to provide the IP address of the gateway because the gateway instance which we have created is running on the particular VM. Okay. So we are providing the IP and port I'm keeping the same. Now this gateway is created. Okay. Through this gateway only we will be able to connect to the 
virtual PLC instance. So when we select the gateway to and we go in the scan, then we can see that we can we are able to scan the virtual PLC. Okay, and then we need to uh, click OK, and then the process remain exactly the same how we do the uh, normally connect with any of the PLC using in the courses. Okay, so we need to provide we need to log in. Okay, so let's go into login. So we need to provide all the credential as it is a new feature for every device, and then we can create the logic in other courses. And we can deploy the code and we can see that it will come in the running mode and we will be able to use this virtual PLC as it is. Let's see how we can utilize the feature uh, which we saw earlier for the configuration. How uh, we can uh, configure those parameters. So here what I have done is I have created a visualization page and what I am going to do is I am going to see it into the web visualization. So if you see right now it is working. Now when I am opening the web uh, uh, URL it is not we are not able to go into the web part so it is saying site cannot be reached so how we can uh, be able to configure this and get this things done so for that what we need to do is we need to go into the deploy uh, control SL and uh, first we will what we will do is we will stop the uh, instance of the virtual PLC okay so once that virtual PLC instance gets stopped then what we can do is we can go to the configure of this particular instance so let me uh, let it get stopped so yeah if you see the status change to idle now we will select the virtual plc instance and then click on the configure so if you see here there is option for the configuration for the port so what we will do is we will provide the port number here okay so once we provide the port number here and we will say click on ok so what i'm doing here is i'm just allowing this port to be exposed for the uh, web URL so because on 8080 port uh, we can be able to access the web visualization now uh, once this configuration is done then it will appear into the port that 8080 is uh, enabled and then we can again start this particular instance so once the status changes to running then what we need to do is we need to go back to the uh, web URL and refresh the page then we can see that our web visualization started loading and we are able to see all those configuration what we have done and when we change the value it is uh, working as expected so in this way we can utilize the configure parameter of the PLC instances so in similar manner we need to configure uh, for the OPC UA also the port number so if you see I have given 4840 port uh, into the configuration and uh, then what we, it will happen that we will be able to uh, get uh, browse the OPC US server of the PLC but still uh, we have given the port but it is not connecting uh, so for why it is not connecting because uh, we need to provide some of the configuration uh, into the OPC US into the device so change the runtime security policy okay so once we go we need to provide uh, it to connect with anonymous login otherwise it will need all the credentials so however we are doing so i'm giving you basic uh, for more details you can check out my other video now uh, when we uh, provide those configuration then we can again rebrowse and we will be able to connect it so let's click on the connect and then we can see that it is connected and we are able to browse all the device all the uh, variables okay so in this way uh, this is on the configuration part uh, how we can utilize even for the OPC UA configuration and we will be able to connect uh, to the OPC UA. But what is the benefit we are getting? Uh, we used to do the same thing earlier also and it was working perfectly fine in any of the PLCs. So uh, let me show you one of the benefit that if we want to create uh, multiple instance or we want to use multiple PLC, how it is uh, very easy in this particular process with using the virtual PLC is we need to again go to the configuration and add a new instance so we need to select the image the image which we have already de deployed so on the same image uh, we can utilize to create another instance of the plc so within no time we will get one more plc as we need and in this manner we can create n number of plc based on our hardware resource so where we have deployed and this 
will bring a major benefit that we don't have to be dependent or create or get new PLC hardware. So that is where they are targeting uh, to utilize this virtual PLC. So uh, we can start another PLC. So PLC instance has been created and it will when we click on that and say select start. So all the same process remains same and it will create and get started. So now once the status change from idle to running, then we can go and scan network and we can see that within no time we have the another instance of the PLC. So this is what uh, one of the benefit which uh, we are seeing that uh, within no time you will be able to deploy n number of PLCs and you can utilize them uh, without any uh, juggling with the wires or uh, without having great, uh, deployment of new hardware PLC configuration and all those things. So once you have done one configuration image has been deployed, the, uh, your server is running, you have abundance of resources to utilize it and within no time you will be having n number of instances. So that is uh, one of the beauty of uh, the virtual PC which is going to bring in. So I hope uh, that's all what I have for this particular video and I will be covering much on this topic. So let me know if you want to hear uh, anything particular on this particular topic. So yeah, that's all in this particular video. Thanks for watching. That's all for this video. Uh, see you in the next one.